Let's take a look at the Verge 3D Puzzles Visual Logic System. So this is the early version 1.0 of Verge 3D, but I think if we get the basic concept of how things in your Blender scene interact with the Puzzles Logic System, it will be easy to keep up with future changes. So this is the scene I'm going to work with. I've just put together a few things to uh, work as an example. What I have here is a text object, and then I've got a scanned model that I've imported as an OBJ file, and it came with its texture and material. And then I've got a few cubes here to use as buttons, and they are parented to my pump object there, and I've got an animation to work with here. So you can see my cubes move along with my pump scanned model. And then I've got a library object, and this isn't entirely necessary, but it's a good idea to take all of the materials that you have in your scene and attach them to a library object. That way you can make sure they're all exported properly. If you want to utilize some materials that you don't have attached to an object at the beginning, they won't be exported. So this is sort of an optional thing you can do to make sure you have all your materials exported and all I've done there is is just taken a a plane subdivided it and then assigned a material to each each of my faces there so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open the app manager to create an application so since this is a logic a visual logic app I'm gonna go ahead and just name my app logic and what I'm going to do is before I hit the create app button I'm going to give you a split screen view so you can see what happens in your apps folder let's go to verge 3d application so here's a list of applications this is my main verge 3d file structure so if I go to applications and if I hit create app now we have a new folder in our applications directory and here are the files for our new application. So let's return to the main screen and now we have our app listed here. So let's open that up and go to puzzles. Now currently we have the default starter scene so what I'm going to do is take the blender file that I've already got going here and I'm going to save it over the top of the default one that was created. So I'm going to hit file save as and here is the the one that was created and so I'm going to save over the top of that so the next thing we need to do is do a GLTF Verge 3D export so if we go to file export come down here we're going to do the Verge 3D GLTF and it's make sure it's going to go to the since I've saved it from a different location just double check and make sure it's it's doing the GLTF file in your applications directory. We'll hit export. So here's our scene again. So I'm going to go ahead and, and go back to our applications manager and I'll go ahead and hit puzzles again. And there is our, our scene now. The first operation we're going to do is we're going to hide and then for a selector we have our object selectors our animation selectors and material selector. So we're just going to pull out uh, object selector and in the drop down we're going to select our materials library. So now when our application runs it's going to hide our materials library. So let's try running it. There, it's done. So now every time the app loads the first thing that happens is the material library gets hidden. Now in order to save our changes we need to hit the save button but here again, I'm going to pull up a split screen view so you can see what happens when you do that. Right now, if you refresh the page, you would lose everything you have done here. And so let's show you how the save actually works. It's not important, but if you're a coder, it kind of helps to understand what's going on behind the scenes. So in our logic application, we have a JavaScript file called VisualLogic.js. And you can see there's nothing here. So you don't need to worry about this, but this is just a matter of helping understand what happens when you do Visual Logic here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Now, once I, 
I have this open with Sublime Text. Once I click on this, then the code that I saved magically appears. So everything that you do here once saved will update this Visual Logic JS file. And one little gem that might help you, you might not find this your first time, is down on the corner here there's a little drag spot where you can drag it out and change what you need to do. Sometimes it's helpful to see your whole scene and other times when you're working on your logic nodes you don't really need to see much and you can just drag it out and fill it up like that. So the next thing I'm going to do is make make it so when I click on this it plays the animation. So let's go to events and bring out a when clicked and we need an object selector so if we go to the object selector and we can pull out an object selector and you can also if there's already one in the scene if you have it selected you can hit control C to copy and then control V to paste and you'll have another copy and then you can always use the drop down to select your object. So I'll stick that in there and I'm going to bring up my pump model. What did I call that thing? Pump. There we go. So when clicked and then I want to play animation. So we need to there we go. Play animation. We'll pull that out. Now we need another selector. We'll go to the selectors and pull out the animation selectors. And so you can see I have only one animation in this scene. So I'm going to delete that one right now. So now if we click our object, it should play. But I'm going to save and then hit play to restart our app. And now when we click our pump, it plays the animation. So now I have these different buttons here and what I want to do is be able to change the, the color of our model according to which color we click. So when you select the top level of, of your logic blocks you can it moves them all around but you can also copy them just like that. So I'm going to start with the red cube and I'm going to say when clicked Oh, where's my red cube? There it is. And then it's going to play the animation, but I also want to assign material. And we need to get out a selector of a material. There's a material selector. So there's our red material. I want to assign red to, and I'm going to copy that one because we're going to assign it to the pump. Oh, when it has of pump, that's actually that's actually a the animation of pump. So let's delete that and copy this one. There we go. There we go. And let's play animation and assign material red to the pump. And I'll hit save and play and see what happens. There we go. So now it's assigned that material to the pump. Now I would like to be able to get my original material back so when we click the pump I would like to have it revert to its original material. So I'm going to copy this and put it up here and we're going to assign the pump material which I named so that I could figure out what it was here. There we go. Now I will save and play and so now if I click my pump it goes back to its original material. The more little groups you have in place, the more you can copy and paste. So I'm going to hit Control C, and I'm going to copy it three more times. So when clicked, I'll change that to the blue cube. I want to play the animation and assign the color blue. And then the green cube assigns the color green and the yellow cube whoops yellow cube assigns yellow there we go and I'll hit save and play there's red blue green yellow and back to the original okay let's do a little bit of dynamic text logic with with our text object here the first thing I'm going to do is create a variable for entering some text. 
So let's just go to our variables and create new variable. And I'm just going to call it input. I'm going to drag a set input to onto the screen. And then I'm going to, let's see, I need a text input. Where do I find that? Prompt for text. There we go. So this is going to, um, wait, actually, I need to select, there, there's my variable. So in the little drop down for your variables, you can select all, all the variables that you have in your project. So it's going to prompt for text, and it's going to give you a message. What it, It'll make a little window here that, that gives you a message. So I'm just going to put enter text. So I'm going to go to text and just get a, a little text box here. And I'm going to change that to enter text. And so that will prompt. And so I want to make this an on-click function. So let's drag in an on-click. So when my text objects, I'll just copy that. In the drop-down, find my text. So when text is clicked, it's going to set my input variable to whatever's written in the prompt for text. So then we're going to pull out an update text operation. So we'll stick that in. And the object there's the text object we're going to update text with we need a variable our input variable so let's go up to variables and pull out that with whatever we input all right let's try that all right so I'm going to click my text object and I get a prompt I'm going to write hi enter and it changes to hi so now let's add some if then logic so let's go to our logic panel and I'm going to pull out an if statement so I want to be able to add uh, dynamically change the color according to the text that we input so let's add some if else functions here let's build this up to have a total of four options and on these little gear icons the only way to make it disappear is to click it again so if we want if input, oh, we need it. We need to do a, like a, a logic. This yeah, we need this deal right here. So let's copy our in, our variable, and then we need a, just a text entry here. So let's copy that. So if our text input is red, we want to do update text objects, assign material. And then we want to assign, let's grab a material already there. And we want to assign red. So if our input is typed in as red, we want to assign red to our object. There we go. So let's add a couple more of those in. What I'm doing is I just copied it and I'm just pasting copies in. And so what are our colors here in order here? So we've got red, blue, green, yellow. So let's change that to blue. And we'll change that one to green. And that one to yellow. And then we need our assigned material copied. Control C to cut, Control V to paste, paste that in, paste it in, and paste it in here. So uh, assign red. So if it's if it's red, assign red. If it's blue, assign blue. If it's green, assign green. And if it's yellow, assign yellow. And we want to place this into our little function here, like this. There we go. So when clicked, when the text object is clicked, it's going to set our variable to an 
a uh, an entered value. It's going to prompt for a text input, and whatever we input is going to set it to that value. Then it's going to update update the text object to whatever we typed in. Now, if that text entry happens to be red, it's going to turn our text red. If it's blue, it's going to turn us blue, etc. So let's hit save and play to see if it works. So let's, I'm going to actually refresh to start from the beginning. We'll hit refresh. By the way, make sure you hit save before you refresh your page. You will lose it all. But then if you're accustomed to working with Blender, you've learned by now to be careful where you click. So let's click on our text object. We're prompted for text. I'm going to type in red, enter, and it updates the text to our red string as well as changing our color. So let's click it again. So let's try green. There's green. Let's click it again. Let's try blue. And there's blue. And if we enter something arbitrary, whoops, then it doesn't change the color. It updates the text, but it doesn't do anything to the color unless the value that we enter matches one of our input cases. So now that you've got an idea how the logic editor works, I'm going to invite you to look at some of the other examples that come with the SDK. So let's go ahead and hit the back button. That's going to take us to our that's going to take us to our app manager. Now I've got a couple here that you won't have. I've, I've got a couple of my own applications I've already got started. A uh, place to start is go to the e-learning application because that has a lot of great logic in it. So let's open the puzzles for that. And I'm just going to drag this out to give us some more room to look at what they've got going on here. So what what this is, this is a create list with. This basically creates an array and in that variable you have all of these entered in. I'll give you a quick look at what the JavaScript looks like. And so here's that actual array right here. It's just it's just a simple array with with all those entries. So you don't need to know about that but if you do much coding it it kinda helps you know what's going on. And that way this can be uh, used in other places in the logic to to refer to all of these objects here. So for example, we have um, all parts animation or all parts anim. So we're gonna so we're gonna stop all parts anim. So if we we come up here, we see that that name refers to all these pieces. So let's take a look at some of the others. If we go to the ring, you can see there's a lot of you know materials changes and stuff like that here. And the spinner. This start this has got an animation it's it starts and stops with. I think after you play around with this for a little while, you'll realize the power that this visual logic system has. Just to make sure I cover everything that's on here, you have a, a zoom in and a zoom out function. And if you somehow get lost, this centers your code. You've got that little drag corner there to drag it out. You can hide your code to look at your app and then bring it back out again. Um, if you hit delete, you lose all your code, but unless you hit save, it's not really gone. You can refresh and it all comes back. Um, if you do a lot of coding and forget to save and hit refresh, you'll lose everything that you haven't saved. So kind of as a habit, every time I make any changes at all, I just go ahead and hit save. And then the, the play button restarts your app and that, that works a lot, but sometimes if you want to start back from the beginning with some parameters that that just come from your Blender scene or something, you can just hit refresh and that works. So this is the blend file that I started with. I'll uh, check the check the links in the description and I'll make this available for download if you want to play with it. One other thing I wanted to cover is if you go to your application file, here's my logic file. If I was going to upload this to my website, I would I would upload all of these files with the exception of the blend file. You don't need that. So once you upload these, your your HTML file will be the landing point and it will then refer to these other files.